All right. Good morning to the Upper Bound class. Um, we are uh, studying again in the book of Proverbs, and I'm in the third chapter, if you will. If you want to get your Bibles and follow along, uh, you can do so. Um, if you have looked on Facebook and seen some of the announcements and things that have been changed, uh, we are in, uh, opening up some Sunday schools on Sunday morning, uh, especially the older uh, groups. I don't think the kids are right now, but some of the older groups are going to resume back uh, to start having Sunday school class on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And so if you, uh, if you would like to... Uh, to be there and show up for that. There will be room and up for spacing uh, if it needs to be, and, and you can uh, uh, take the precaution just as well as what we've been doing in the morning service. And what uh, the ones that uh, will not be able to be there, there's ones I think that uh, uh, may be watching uh, this uh, Sunday instead of me doing the live, that uh, keep that in mind. And uh, I am going to try to uh, get things together where that I can uh, maybe teach the Sunday school lesson on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and have a Facebook Live as well on that where everybody can uh, be there at the same time and to be able to uh, uh, converse as well. So, but anyway, you know, we're slowly, uh, slowly getting a little bit better in this, slowly uh, coming together. Uh, as we go along. So hopefully, uh, you know, in times past coming on up that we'll be able to uh, get a little bit more together as we go along. So if you will, uh, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, turn to your Bibles on um, Proverbs chapter 3. We started uh, in the latter part of that chapter in uh, verse 21. We studied last week, you know, about Solomon talking to uh, his son and and at that point in, in the first part of uh, Proverbs chapter 3 son is a little older he's a, a little bit more mature and uh, and Solomon is teaching him uh, more to listen to the ways of God and to heed uh, to the things of God there um, let's go let's check the switch a little yeah there we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. I uh, got that back on. Sorry about that. But anyway, Solomon is, is, is trying to teach uh, him to remember the laws of God and to the directions that God would have uh, him to, to go through that and how to treat people and, and different things. So as we go along, as we move along here in uh, the book of Proverbs, Solomon is teaching in his word here. He's bringing us along. He's bringing his son along in different ways uh, that he needs to conduct uh, his life. So if you want to look here in verse 21, let me read uh, a little bit uh, from the uh, uh, the uh, Sunday School lesson here. The Sunday School lesson book says, talking about direction offered. In other words, you know, we as, as, as in Solomon looking here talking about his child, uh, we as parents, uh, are constantly as their as their kids get older and different things are giving him directions. We're offering him directions to go, and how we're able to offer directions to go is because a lot of these experiences that we're going to see them face are things that uh, we've been faced, you know, in the past, and have a better understanding on what's the best way to handle them. And we know Solomon is trying to teach uh, his older. Uh, son there, he's trying to teach him the ways of God. And it says here in, in the Sunday School lesson, it said, God provides direction to those who place their trust in Him. You know, the only way uh, that we're going to get guidance uh, from the Word of God, we're going to get guidance uh, through God speaking uh, to our heart, speaking through the Word, is we're going to have to trust Him. We have to trust Him in what he has us to do. Sometimes we may not understand what that is or we may not understand the direction that God would have us to go. Sometimes we may not be willing <laughs> to go in that direction that God would have us to go because when we look at that direction that He gives us, we may see uh, uh, some, uh, 
some a hard road there, not an easy road to go in that. But what he's saying here is, in that we have got to be able to trust God when he gives us the direction. Look what it says here in the opening statement that he has. He talks about, he says, a global positioning system. In other words, we talk about GPS that we have today. We can push a button on our phone and our phone can give us all kinds of directions on where we go. And 99% of that, people will poke that direction in, it will give us the direction, and we have full faith and trust in that GPS system that it's going to take us to that spot. You know, and if you've used that GPS system a lot, you'll understand sometimes it don't put you in a perfect spot, does it? It may have you two or three houses down. It may have you on another street or something like that. It's not 100% perfect, but we put our trust in that system to guide us in places we go. And that's what God is talking about here, that we need to trust in Him in those guidance and in those directions. And I guarantee if we trust in Him, we're not going to be off course. We're going to be on course. So the GPS, it's a handy tool, it says. It's the address that it gives where to go and we find our way. And it even tells you how long you have to travel. In other words, it'll give you how many miles and all that stuff. A lot of you know uh, what I'm talking about there. Those tools, he said, the tools that uh, will, he said, the tools works well unless you decide you're going to ignore it and go another direction. But how many times have you use the GPS and you decide to go in the other direction and it's trying to find a way to pick it up, you know, find another route or another road to pick up to get you that direction to keep you, you know, to get you back. But it, it takes a minute for it to do that. He said that's when we hear the rerouting. <laughs> How many times have we heard rerouting when we change the direction on that? On their talking what they say there. And he said that does it over. He said now Solomon gave clear instructions about how to live wisely. But these instructions are useless to the person who refuses to follow those directions. You know, if God gives us a direction, He gives us a direction to go His way, not our way, right? He gives us a direction to hear, I will have you to do this, I will have you to follow me, and if you will follow his directions, you're going to get to where you, he needs you to be. And if you don't follow those directions, you're not going to be in where God wants you to be. The second part of that is you're not going to be in his will in that. So that's what Solomon is bringing to his son here. And if we look in, in verse 21, we'll read, it says, My son... He says, not let them depart from thine eyes. What's he talking about them? He's talking about God's direction there. Don't let that depart from thine eyes, he said. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. You know, and what he's talking about there, that means when he talked about sound wisdom and direction, it refers to, the God, to God's knowledge. It refers to what God gives to you in the direction that we have you to go. And let me tell you something. God knows far more than we do <laughs> when it comes to these things. When He gives us directions, God would never give us a direction to go if He don't know Himself about that. You see what I mean? God only gives us directions that are true. And He says in verse 22, He said, So shall they be life unto you, unto thy soul, and grace unto thy neck. And Brother McGee says here, so you see, life and grace come through his wisdom, this wisdom of studying the Word of God. And that's, that, that's hitting the nail right on the head. It comes from us studying, it comes through the grace and the wisdom by studying the Word of God. We know, and I, I've, I've had Brother Jerry to say this many, many times, most people know more about the, what the will of God is for the lives what they're willing to do. <laughs> you know, in those things. Because why? When they see those things and they see that God might be pulling them in a certain direction, what they look for is obstacles. 
They see and they want to look at what kind of obstacles am I going to have to go through to do this. Instead of just saying, God, I trust you. This is the direction you're going to have. Whatever obstacles in my way, I know that you will take care of. And that's what that means for what he's talking about there. In verse 23, he says, Then shall thou walk in thy way safely. If we trust God in these things, we will walk in that way safely, and the foot shall not stumble. You've heard the old saying that, that the old people say sometimes that somebody does this or does that, and they say they knocked my feet right out from under me. You've heard those sayings, whatever. It just it just floored me and knocked my feet right out from under me. What he's saying here is if you follow his directions, Solomon's telling him, that your foot shall not stumble. So he's saying here, if you're following my direction, those paths that you're going to take, I'm going to clear the way for you, and you won't stumble as you're going along. Sometimes we're skeptical. Sometimes we, 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 it's just hard for us to understand these things because we cannot see it fully through that until it's over with, until it's done. But God sees it fully there, and He's saying that, that thou will walk in a way safely and shall not stumble. When thou liest down, listen to what He said. Well, then when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. He said, Yea, thou shalt lie down and sleep and shall be sweet. You'll sleep like a baby when He's talking. He said, You'll follow my will, if you'll follow my directions. He said, You will be able to lay down and sleep like a baby. You will be. Not in fear. It's what he's talking about. You're not be afraid. And Brother McGee says, How wonderful it is to discover that the truth of God will hold us. It is not that you and I hold the truth, but he said the truth holds us. <laughs> we got to depend on the truth of God to hold us. And when we can depend on that, when we have troubles, when we have things in our lives, when we have things that cause us to stumble, we can rely on the truth of God that He'll work it out for us. You know, we see all this stuff happening today. There's a lot of people around the country and the world right now that are laying their heads on the pillows in fear about all this stuff going on. You know, so it's tough. It's very, very tough to be able to do that. But He's saying here is that you can lie down, sleep shall be sweet if you put your trust in me and listen to the truth. And the truth is what holds us together. It says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it comes. You know, a lot of things that we're facing out there today has come quickly and suddenly. But he's telling his son, and don't be afraid of the sudden fear. What do we do when, when these things happen? We, we go and, and we, start to, we try to reason, we try to process it ourselves and different things like that instead of just letting God process it for us. You know, we're going to humanly try to figure this thing out ourselves. But he's saying here, don't be afraid of the sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked. You know, that's a hard thing to do, isn't it? That's a hard thing for us as human beings to do to not be afraid of those situations. You see? Because it puts our lives in jeopardy. It puts our health in jeopardy. It puts all this stuff in jeopardy and things. And it's hard for us to cope and to do that. But he's telling. Because the truth will hold us. He's saying here, don't be afraid of sudden fear. Verse 26 is for us, Well, the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep the foot from being taken. He's saying here that let God be our confidence. Put our, our faith, put our fears in God's hands and He will be our confidence. We have confidence in Him that He will pull us through. <coughs> but He will do that. But sometimes it takes us a little while to understand that. It takes us a little bit of time to understand it. It takes us through some period of time where we find out ourselves that we cannot handle this. Or we cannot handle it. <clears throat> Listen, 
there's a lot of tensions right now on all this stuff. There's tensions in our church. There's tensions in our country. There's tensions in our society. There's tensions in our in our county right around us right now about all this stuff that's going on. People are are tense through all this. <clears throat> but he's saying here, let the Lord will be, let him be your confidence. Let him be the one that will keep your foot from being taken. That's what he's saying. Listen to what this uh, comment says. He said, he said, be not afraid of sudden fear. Don't be afraid of the next minute. God is taking care of me at the present moment and he will take care of me in the next moment. <laughs> so what's he saying here? God will take care of you in now and in the next moment to come. He said, withhold not from them to whom it is due. He gets in a different uh, situation here. He says, withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. He's doing a little shift here. He's shifted here about uh, dealing with people. He's shifted here on how uh, that, that we should deal. He said, let not good from them that is the things that are that whom is due. In other words, if you if you owe somebody something, no matter what it is, you know, if it's a due to them, don't withhold that, he's saying. Take care of them. Take care of that person. Take care of the need of that if it needs to be done. He said, well, and, and, and the deal is what he's talking about here. He said, if it is in the power and in that in the power of that hand, if you have got the opportunity to take care of that, do it. That's what he's saying here. If you have, if, if if you see somebody you know that's on the road and something's going wrong with that whatever, and you've got the tools in your truck or whatever to help them, he's saying, go help them. Stop by there and help them. You have the tools and the power to do that. And then it goes down even in, uh, you know, to, to owe people money and different things. If you've got the money, that going it, <laughs> pay them. Pay your bills. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, that, that just worry themselves to death about not taking care of their bills. They, the first thing on hand in their mind is to pay people that they owe. A lot of people will knock your door down to pay what you owe. And some you got to run down. <laughs> you see what I mean? But he's saying here, if you got it, pay us due. It says, say not unto the neighbor, go and come again tomorrow. In other words, he said, if you have the opportunity to take care of this, do it now. Don't tell them that you'll come back tomorrow. What happens a lot of times whenever somebody says you'll come back tomorrow? Nine times, a lot of times you never see them again. You know, do it now. Take care of it. Don't come back tomorrow. He said, I will give. He said, go and come again tomorrow. I will give when thou hast it by thee. In other words, when he has it right now. And don't say, hey, wait, I, you know, I'll be back. I'll, I'll do this to you later. I'll help you later. It's like you driving by this guy I'm talking about, you know, and he know him, he's a friend, you know, and stuff, and, and you've got the stuff to help and you. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll come help you get your truck out. <laughs> you know, that poor soul needs his truck out now. He don't need it tomorrow. He needs the help now. Listen to what Brother McGee says. Do you, do you know that when you and I owe money to another person, that money we have is not ours. It belongs to that other man. <laughs> you know, pretty good. And he said, to use it for your own purpose is actually dishonest. And he said, that's what we're talking about here. You got it. You use it for something else. You owe that person so much money. You owe this or whatever. And you do go do the same thing for somebody else. It's dishonest because you owe that to that one. It's, third. it's not yours. The time is not yours. And he said, devise not evil against thy neighbor. See, he dwelleth securely by thee. Don't do things that you would that you would take advantage of somebody or take or make to a disadvantage. He's saying here, don't do that. Don't don't. He's talking about. He said that's evil actually toward your neighbor when you're taking advantage. You know, it's not good for somebody to, to have a problem like this. Is something hard for me to do? 
And a lot of people, you know, they insist, but a lot of times you go and you help somebody in a situation that they need, and they say, what do I owe you? <laughs> really, in a sense, they don't owe you nothing because you're doing it in the goodness of your heart. Now, if, if, if you're, I think out there, if it's something that they got to have in parts or something, you may let them pay for the part. But as far as your service, you know, if you can, if you can do it for nothing, do it for nothing. That's, 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 that's going, that's doing good for your neighbor. And that's what that we should do here. We should try to do that. I've had people that say, you know, I'm going to give you something. <laughs> I said, I don't want nothing. It's fine. I don't need it. I don't want nothing. I'm going to give you something. We were singing one time. Judy, you remember? We were singing one time in this little church of Rockcastle County. You remember years ago? You remember that? Those me and you, Daryl, all we went through. And we, went, we sang there, and they wanted to give us an offering. You remember that? And we didn't want an offering. But they wanted to give us an offering. We want to do it. So they took an offering up. But when we took the offering up, what did we do with it? You remember? We give it back to them. We put it back in their offering plate. Because we didn't need the money. We was doing that to, to glorify God and to fellowship with them. But in their heart, they wanted to give us something. And that's fine. But we turn back and give it back to God because that's what it should be. You know, that's what it should be. But we knew where they were coming. They wanted to do that. You know, I think if we took the money, we'd be doing it a disadvantage to them. You know, a little church, they, they need that money, but the heart wanted to help us out, and that was fine. But then in turn, we want to help them back out. You know, and, and, and all that. But not to do things and, and cause it to be a disadvantage to people. It's not a good thing to do that. And, and let's look at, see, verse 30, he said, Strive not with a, with a man without cause. If he had done thee no harm. This is what he says here. He said, Beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath what is written. Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. That is what he's talking about here. Strive not with a man without cause. He said, if he have done the harm, basically what's God saying? He said, I'll take care of that. Don't be vengeful yourself. I will take care of that. He said, I will repay, saith the Lord. And that's one of the biggest verses I think that a lot of people uh, know and understand, or not so much understand, but it's in the Bible that we need to understand that we can have a lot of vengeance, we can have a lot of strife toward people. But he says, that's for me to do. That's what God said. You love them, and I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> and it's both hard uh, for us to do in that. Verse 31, it says, Envy, not, envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. What's he saying about it? Don't go away the violent man. You know, envy not the oppressor, in other words, and, and listen, this is hard. Somebody, somebody does you wrong. Somebody, uh, you know, causes you trouble, and it's automatic that you want, <laughs> you want to get revenge back somehow. You want to do that, but he says here, you know, choose not his ways. You know, you've heard people say, well, "Let's fight fire with fire." <laughs> you know, they give me fire, I give them fire back, but. Said that's the way of the Bible man to do that. He's telling his son, you know, his son is going to have all kinds of times whenever anger is going to come about him whenever somebody's oppressing him. That's what he's talking about right there. He says, verse 32 says, For the forward man is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with, but his secret is with the righteous. In other words, you know, people, people have a hard time understanding how we can love somebody that does us wrong. You know? How can you love somebody that does us wrong? It's a tough deal for people to understand because a lot of people don't understand that. But to do these things, you know, back at them is abomination of the Lord, but 
But to do this in the secret of the heart, he's called us righteous because we're showing love to them. There are certain people out there who are actually abomination to the Lord, he says. But the latter, but he said, in fact, the latter on it, in, on this book, we find some of the things God hates. He mentioned there uh, here in Proverbs. He said, we're getting, we're going to get to that. Listen to what he's talking about here. He said, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But the blessing, but the blessed that have it of the just. You know, the, the wicked he's talking about here is, is the people who are lawless people. They don't abide by nothing but their own rules. We're seeing a lot of that going on right now. The wicked are lawless people. And he said the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. You know, they will go back to just what he says right there. When you see that right there, then you see what he says. He says, that's mine to handle. I will take care of that. You know, but in the flip side, he says, we're to love them and to show them the side of Christ. And maybe, you know, they can turn from that. But if, but if we see, if, if they see, and it's hard, listen guys, it's, that's hard for me. Because when, when they say us wanting to get back at them, they see Christians want to get back at them, you're not going to win them for Christ if you're trying to get back at them. And that's what he's saying here is, is we've got to try to show love somehow. And when they look at that, they ain't nothing they can say. And God says, here in his word, he says, I will take care of that. I want you to lead them to the Lord. <laughs> you know, do we see a wall there? Do we see, you know, in our eyes that there's no way that that can that ever happen? Yeah, we do. We see that in our eyes. We see that. We see those the wicked people. We see the lawless people and all this stuff. And we see in our eyes, those people, they'll never change. They'll never come. But I'm telling you, through all that we've seen, you see everything on TV, you might not hear the story of that person that somebody actually talked to and actually got saved through that. It could very well happen because they show love instead of fighting for with fire. He says, surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. So what? God here, God has had a way of doing it either way. He can scorn the scorners, and he can also show grace to, to, to the one that's been scorned. Can he? Oh, man. He says in verse 35, the wise shall inherit glory. Who's the wise? The wise he's talking about is the ones that trust in God. The wise are the ones that talk about that they get their wisdom and they get their understanding and they get their knowledge from the Word of God. He said the wise should inherit glory. But listen to what he said. But the shame shall be a promotion of fools. Those who choose not the ways of the Lord, he's basically saying, are fools. You know, that's harsh words that it come from the Word of God. That's hard words. But he's telling them the truth that people that trust in me will inherit glory. We will inherit glory one of these days, won't we? We will. But those that the shame you're talking about, the shame shall be he's talking about the wicked, he's talking about the lawless people, he's talking about the people that don't retain, don't want to retain the things of God in their minds. They don't want no part of it, none whatsoever. That he's saying there. And he said there'd be a promotion of fools. And you know, we understand and we know what the Bible teaches. And we know that those that choose not to retain the things of God have a bad, bad, bad future. But he tells us we can inherit glory. We have a good, good, good future. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Let's go Lord prayer. Father, we come here with thanking you. Lord, we thank you for your grace that you bestow upon us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand, Lord, if we trust in you, that we will be able to live without fear. But we have to put that trust in you, Lord. And sometimes in our daily lives and the things that come against us, that's, that's kind of maybe hard to do. It may take 
a little bit of time down the road for us to just truly uh, just let you be in charge, Lord, of our lives to do that. Lord, I pray you help us uh, through these things. Help us, Lord, to be able to do that, Lord. And when we do that, you'll guide us through a path with no stumbling blocks, even though it seems like there are walls everywhere we go. But Lord, those paths that you guide us through will be paths that, we, that you have already gone ahead of us. And you've already uh, gotten rid of all the obstacles and walls that are there. But we cannot see that. And we'll not see it until we put our trust in that and see it through. And then we'll see it through after it's done. So we thank you. We praise you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for uh, this time to be able to come uh, in these ways to be able to still share your word. And hopefully, Lord, as time goes on, that we'll be able to uh, come together just a little bit more and a little bit more and be able to come together and glorify your name. That's just my name.